Hi, this is a quick three minute video on this. Hi, this is the final video, video number five in this particular worksheet where we're looking at predicted questions for this year's GCSE. And the previous four videos we completed through to the end of question four. In this one, we're going to look at question number five. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of these questions, and you can also download the worksheet directly from Three Minute Maths. Okay, so here we are on question number five. Now this one is a little bit challenging to work through, so hopefully you'll be able to, to follow me through, but please do stop the video and have a go at each of these. We're going to use this whole process of substitution in order to solve this particular equation because we've got a value of y squared for the second one, which is effectively a quadratic equation. Okay, so if I look at the first equation, I can rewrite that as y equals 5 minus minus 2x all divided by 3. Okay, and then it's a case of substituting that into the second equation. And what I'm going to get is 5 minus 2x all divided by 3, and that's going to be squared. So it's 5 minus 2x all divided by 3 again. That's equal to x multiplied by 5 minus 2x all divided by 3, and then that's going to be plus 5. Okay, so what we need to do now is really solve this for x. It is quite challenging to do that, but uh, do have a go please do stop the video and have a go at each of these uh, questions. Okay, so the first left-hand side, I'm going to multiply those two fractions together. So I can multiply the top as being 25, and then it's going to be minus 10x minus 10x plus 4x squared, and that's all divided by 9. Don't forget, when you multiply fractions together, you also multiply the denominators as well. Okay, on the right-hand side, I've got x multiplied by 5 minus 2x all divided by 3. There's a slightly different, so it's going to be x times bigger. Okay, so I'm going to get 5x minus 2x squared, and that's divided by 3, and that's plus 5. Okay, so here's my problem, is that I've got a denominator of 9, a denominator of 3, and effectively a denominator of 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them all the same. I'm going to make them all a denominator of 9. Okay, so I can leave the first one as it is, but I'm going to tidy it up. I'm just going to write it in ascending order as 4x squared, and that's minus 20 x plus 25, and that's all over 9. And then on the right-hand side here, I need to multiply each of the terms through by 3. So effectively, I'm going to get 15x minus 6x squared all divided by 9. And then I'm going to add that to 5 over 1 multiplied by 9 is going to give me 45 over 9. OK, so now I've got a denominator that's the same for all of them. I can ignore it. <laughs> it doesn't really matter because I've leveled the playing field a little bit. OK, so I've got, uh, I've got to make everything equal to 0 on the left-hand side, and then I'm going to factorise it. So I've got 4x squared minus 6x squared. Well, that's fine. That's going to give me 10x squared. And then I've got minus 20x. Uh, minus 15x, because I'm going to bring it over to the left-hand side, it's going to give me minus 35x. And then I've got uh, plus 25, and then effectively minus 45, and that's going to give me minus 20, and that all equals 0. OK, so things are looking a little bit healthier, and it's also, also better because I can divide through all of these numbers by 5, and that's just going to make it a little bit more manageable as 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 equals 0. OK, now there are a couple of different ways of factorising this. Now, generally with these sorts of questions, you're going to get a whole number. Um, you could put it into the quadratic formula if you wanted to. It's not a problem. However, I'm going to do it a slightly different way. I'm going to say, well, 2 multiplied by minus 4 is minus 8. And then I've got two numbers that when I multiply them together, make minus 8. And when I add them together, make minus 7, which is going to be minus 8 and 1. OK, so I can rewrite this now as being rather than uh, minus 7x in the middle there, I'm going to have minus 8x 
and then plus 1x minus 4 equals 0. So I haven't actually changed anything. What I've done is I've just altered the two middle numbers. And what that means then is I can factorise the first two terms by 2x and I'm going to get x minus 4. And then if I factorise the second two terms by positive 1, I get x minus 4. OK, so therefore I've now got two common terms, which is x minus 4, and that's going to be multiplied by 2x plus 1, and that equals to 0. OK, so at long last now I've got my two values of x. I've got the value of x that says, OK, x equals minus a half. And I've got the value of x where x equals positive 4. And then really it's just a case of putting these values back into the value for y, which is y equals 5 minus 2x all divided by 3. So I'm going to get 5 minus 2 times minus a half, just be careful, all divided by 3. And when I calculate that, I'm going to get that y equals 2. So my first set of values is when x equals minus a half, y equals 2. OK, and I could do exactly the same for when x equals 4. So y equals 5 minus 2 times 4, and that's all divided by 3. And therefore, when I work that all out, I'm going to get y equals negative 1. So now I've got two more values, x equals 4 and y equals negative 1. And actually, that is the answer to this particular question. So it is a lot of work to work through this, but I hope it's been useful to you. Please do let me know if you're not sure. There is a, another worksheet and some follow a walkthrough videos on these types of questions, which I'll be able to provide you with a link with. Um, please do let me know in the comments and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video. OK, so I hope the video was useful. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you. Subscribe to the channel. I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.